This was posted December the 20th, 2022. This is the first of a series of articles that I am working on. Another year, another Christmas, another day that Myra Ramey is missing. Another day that her children have to wake up and wonder where their mother is. Another day that her own mother has to wonder if her daughter is alive or dead. Another day that so many wonders if she is still out there. And if she isn't, where is she and what happened to her? Myra Gertrude Ramey has been missing for a little over two years now. It has been two years since the fateful night she stepped from the cab of her boyfriend's truck into the Buchanan County darkness, only to vanish. Buchanan County investigators are still following up on what they consider promising leads. Myra Ramey was reported missing by family members on Sunday, September the 6th, 2020. At the time of her disappearance, the 47-year-old had been living with her new boyfriend in a home that was next door and owned by her mother, Gertrude Barton. Ramey had been with her new beau, Larry Van Meter, in Maryland, where the two had met. She had briefly moved there in July of 2020. By early August, she made her way back to Virginia with Van Meter. Barton said the last time she'd seen her daughter, she was sitting on the back of Van Meter's motorcycle ready to go for a ride. She also said that she and her daughter had spent some time that evening sitting on the porch chatting. Barton remembered urging her daughter to put on a jacket before going on the motorcycle. Myra left around 6 p.m. The next day, another relative of Ramey had come to visit her, only to find that she had not returned home with Larry Van Meter the following night. Laura Presley, Ramey's niece, is on record as saying, Van Meter told her and other family members that he and Ramey had returned that night to swap the motorcycle for his truck and that they had gone out to the home of a mutual friend about ten minutes away. On the way back home, Van Meter stated that they had gotten into an argument and that Ramey asked him to stop the truck and let her out. He said she jumped out of the truck near Duty Free Will Baptist Church in the Indian Creek area on Helen Henderson Highway. Presley stated, After hearing this, Myra's mother began calling her friends to see if anyone had talked to her, but no one had heard from her. Turning up no clues to her whereabouts, Presley filed a missing persons report with the Buchanan County Sheriff's Office that night. Deputies picked up where the family left off and did a cursory search of the area. That search went through the night and continued into the following day as they checked nearby residents while an investigator began questioning those who had, lo who had last saw Ramey. Meanwhile, community members joined on the search. Van Meter told police that Ramey was likely under the influence of drugs and that she had accidentally grabbed his cell phone instead of hers when she exited the truck. Her cell phone was found inside the vehicle. Hatfield stated that investigators were unable to retrieve any information from the device that might help them locate her. Also, the cell phone company reported that there had been no activity on the phone since Ramey was last seen. Investigators tried to track her down using debit card usage, but this was also unsuccessful. In the first days of the investigation, police considered the possibility that Ramey may have just wanted some time to cool down, but as more time passed, their efforts turned into a recovery. Nobody had heard from her. There's been no activity on her debit card or anything. Within the first week, we decided you know something isn't right. She's gone or somebody has done something to her, said Chief Deputy Eric Breeding. Describing Ramey as a loving person who was close with her family, 
Presley and Barton said she had daily contact with her mother, often walking next door to have dinner with her. She always hugged me and told me she loved me. She was a very loving person and she loved animals. She had her faults, but she was a very sweet person. Suddenly going off the radar did not fit her character. A week or so after her disappearance, a water rescue team was put together by the Virginia Department of Emergency Management. Although members and volunteers searched the ground, abandoned homes, nearby ponds, streams, gas wells, strip mines, and logging roads, they found no signs of Ramey. Early on in the investigation, Chief Deputy Breeding said police suspected something sinister had happened to her. Hatfield explained that investigators have reason to believe that Ramey may have gone to confront someone that she had been in a fight with. That person, along with Van Meter and the two friends that Ramey had previously visited, are now considered persons of interest. That would be the last people that were with her, and of course her boyfriend, because he was the last one to say that he had saw her. Breeding and Hatfield both explained that a person of interest was not necessarily a suspect. Though he was reluctant to go into specifics, Breeding said of the person Myra had gone to meet, there was a piece of evidence that led us to believe that he was more involved with her disappearance. He would not elaborate and has said nothing more since. All four persons of interest have been interviewed. The fourth person of interest, the one that they are most interested in, later moved to Oregon and died. Van Meter, who was on federal probation, returned to Maryland at the behest of his probation officer. He has not responded to any attempts to be contacted by, the, by this person writing this. I'm sure the police interviewed him, and uh, the family does what it can to keep her disappearance fresh in the minds of people. There is a currently an $11,000 reward for any information that could lead to a conviction. If you have any information about this case, please contact Deputy Hatfield at 276-935-2313. The truth is out there. Someone knows something. If anyone has any information, please contact this page. And this is the Russell Free Press, Russell County Free Press. There are some YouTube videos that outline the case and ask for assistance in locating her, but this has been largely underreported. This article doesn't include a lot of information. The next one will include some interviews and quotes from her family and friends. I want people to think of her, two, of her daughters who live every single day not knowing what happened to their mother. I want people to think of her mother who lives every single day what happened to her daughter. Myra touched a lot of people and everyone had kind, honest, or kind things to say about her. We have got to start talking about Myra. We have got to get the story out there. Now, this is signed Walker Wilder, November 7th, 2022. This is the article that they referred to, Southwest Virginia Today. Buchanan County officials continue to investigate a woman's disappearance as her family prays for answers. The investigation into the disappearance of Myra Gertrude Ramey has not gone cold, not yet. A little more than two years since the Davenport, Virginia woman went missing, Buchanan County investigators are still following up on what they consider promising leads. Her mother, who was 80 years old at that time, had started making phone calls to neighbors. You know, stuff like this, is it, it makes it even more heart-wrenching when you think about this this lady is 82 now I'm, I'm i'm assuming going probably pushing close to 83 
she, I'm sure her daughter would now be around 50 years of age. Um, to go into your older years like that and not know what happened to your child. I mean, I, I'm, I, I can only imagine it doesn't matter how old they are or how old you are, the parent, at the time that that takes place. You spend the rest of your life. Myra Gertrude Barton Ramey was last seen September 6, 2020, between 2 and 4 a.m., getting out of her male friend's vehicle on Indian Creek near Davenport, Virginia. She was wearing a blue and gray shirt, gray leggings, pink shoes, and was carrying a coach purse. She also had a faded, laser-treated tattoo on her ankle and a scar on her left knee. If anyone has any information, please contact the Buchanan County Sheriff's Office. He very well could have been telling the truth. Or he could, something could have happened and he got so freaked out because he was on probation. It doesn't say anywhere if the police were really leaning more toward him or toward someone else. I, what I would love to hear is, they said that sometime between 2 and 4. Now here is something that is somewhat questionable, and, I, and, it, and this is where my mind goes to, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. They left on the motorcycle at 6 p.m. He comes back home, and I don't know if anybody said what time of night it was when he comes back home to get the truck. He brings the motorcycle back and gets the truck. Was she with him when they returned on the motorcycle? Or did he come and get the truck to haul her body someplace? I'm just throwing questions out there. This is just my mind working through some, you know, questions. Did they both return home and everything was fine? They'd come home, maybe they were were under the influence, as some people said. Did they get into a huge argument, and did something happen at that time? Did the police search the home? Did they search his truck for DNA? Which, I mean, you know, her being having been in the home and in the truck, I'm sure, unless it was blood or huge amounts of blood or something like that, um... But like I said, I'm just throwing some questions out there that are going through my own mind. She had strawberry blonde hair, and her hair was dyed. Her natural hair color is brown, but her hair was dyed to a strawberry blonde. Her hair was shoulder length. She had a brown. She had brown eyes. She has a scar on her left knee and a faded, laser-treated tattoo on her ankle. She was wearing bright pink tennis shoes, carrying a coach purse. Myra was, was reported missing the next day by her boyfriend, so she was reported missing by him. But now in the other article, it says that someone in her family went to the home and he told them that she had not returned back home with him. So did he call in and report her missing? Because it said in the other article that it was her, I believe her niece, that called and reported her missing. Had he called any of the family looking for her and asking if maybe, you know, if you, you would think, okay, we got into an argument. And, and for future reference, men or women... If you get into an argument with your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, a child, or anybody else, don't stop the car and put them out. And if they beg you to stop and let them out, take them someplace. Don't just let them out on a dark, deserted highway or roadway out in the woods, which I doubt very much that that actually happened. But if you're going to put someone out of your vehicle, at least take them to a gas station, a Walmart parking lot, or something. You know, or drop them off at a family member's home and wait until they come up and knock on the door and someone actually 
let some in before you drive off. That will save you a lot of trouble. Because if they do go missing, if something does happen to them, you won't say, well, I left them out in the woods at 3 o'clock in the morning and just took off and left them. But you would think that if that had happened, that the first thing he would think would be, even if she owned, if she had his cell phone and not her own, she would have used his cell phone to call for help. She would have used his cell phone to call a family member. And and I know we live in a world right now where our phones keep our numbers, and we don't. Sometimes we don't know people's phone numbers off the top of our head. But if I'm out at two, three, four o'clock in the morning on a dark highway or roadway, and I can call nobody else for help, I'm gonna call nine one one, and I'm gonna say I've been I've been deserted beside the highway. But we also have to keep in mind. She very well may have been under the influence and didn't want to get in trouble. But I don't think that that was the scenario that went down. He stated that they argued. She exited the vehicle on a public road. He reported Myra left walking in the opposite direction as he drove away. This area has no cell service and is very isolated. There are no stores. There are very few homes and very little traffic at that hour. The report included a statement that the couple had been to another couple's home ten to fifteen or five to ten minutes prior to this argument that apparently came from out of nowhere. And that couple gave statements that she left there safely. Canines were not able to detect her scent in that area. Search and rescue teams have turned up nothing. They believe that this other couple probably were the other couple that was being questioned. Now, I suspected there was something more to it than just a simple argument between her and her boyfriend. What was her boyfriend on probation for in Maryland? Why did he leave Maryland and come to Virginia? Which is not a big distance, but why was she in Maryland to begin with? There's a lot of backstory to this and that's the problem with a lot of these lesser known cases you don't get a lot of backstory there there is so little back history but once i found this video this guy's telling some stuff about some people from that area who were suspects suspects and suspected of having been involved in more than just a simple argument between a boyfriend and girlfriend there was more to this, you know, that met the eye. Okay, so as I continue to listen on, it seems as though this guy is suggesting that some of the people on this list that he named jumped this woman and took her phone because they thought she was a confidential informant. Whether she was or not, I haven't seen anything, and I'm sure the police would not reveal that. I mean, they might, but... Um, they took her phone. The reason her boyfriend told the police that she accidentally picked up his phone when she exited the truck. And um, her phone, was her phone supposed to have been in his truck? Because they said that they jumped, that she was jumped and her phone was taken. Is it possible that if she was a confidential informant that she did have a second phone. They wanted to go through her phone and, and see if she was in contact with the police or with someone who uh, was undercover that she was reporting information back to. Now, once again, let me say, I have no idea if any of this is true. I'm just reading, I'm just re relaying this guy's video, what he's saying. I just wanted to read some of the um, comments. Maybe some of the family members that he's trash-talking. False information. I live in Alabama. This is one of the people who was named in the, in the possible suspects by this man. I live in Alabama and wasn't even in Virginia for that night. I wasn't there the night she went missing, and I didn't know anything about the fight that she was in. 
There's a woman contacting all these YouTube creators and feeding them false information. Someone else says, oh, well, how would you know that if you weren't there? Um, apparently, some people are saying that she was beat up. Um, she was jumped and beat up and her phone was taken. This is spec. This is comments. I'm just reading comments. This is from one of the people who was named here. Um, I was at work when she got beat up by my friend, my sister's friends. I think this. Some people are suggesting that this was her daughter. So was it her other daughter's friends who beat her up? Then she went missing basically that morning. I had to work. I wouldn't have had time to go to Virginia and be involved in any of that. I have already spoken to investigators. If anyone has heard my name or that I have been part of that, I could clear this up easily. I was in Alabama working. Um, I never said it was a setup. Mom was known for being a narc. Now, they're talking about this missing woman right now. That doesn't go over too well in that part of the country. She had put one of the friend's father in jail because she snitched on him. My mom started the fight. You would have had to know her to understand the situation. I will always tell people the straight facts. Don't drag my name through the mud. So you're making excuses now for the horrible thing that happened to your mom. You need to repent. You need to speak up and tell everything that you know. No one deserves to be killed by another human being. And then it's just more comments. With all due respect, he asked you to come and clear that up. That means clarify your alibi or whatever. I don't understand because I have a missing family member and I am constantly begging people for information. See, these, these things go so much deeper than just a simple case of a man and a woman getting into an argument and he sets her out. Apparently this girl, this woman had a daughter and her and her daughter had problems between the two of them because people were accusing this Myra, this missing woman, of having been a police informant or otherwise known as a narc. Apparently someone got arrested and taken to jail based on information that she supposedly gave the police and they set her up to be beaten up and apparently they're saying that the boyfriend switched out the phones because her phone was taken because I guess these people wanted to know if she had information on her phone. It's, it's crazy what goes on in this world. But whatever happened, whatever led up to this woman's disappearance, whether she was a police informant or not, whether she was beaten up by these people or whether she did just get into an argument with her boyfriend, uh, Police dogs were not able to pick up her scent in the area where he claims to have left her. Um, her cell phone was missing. Whatever else happened, this woman is still missing. And her mother, if no one else, deserves to know what happened to her. And the people like myself and others out here that have some concern for her would like to know what happened to her. And if it's true that she was set up and beat up and murdered, regardless of what the circumstances were that led to it, someone, two people, three people, ten people, whoever was involved with setting this up, putting this into motion, uh, who laid hands on her, who helped to conceal her body or dispose of her body, they should all be held accountable. Now, like I said, I don't know if any of that is true or not, but I'll just leave that as saying, as of today, she is still missing. Her case is still under investigation. They're not considered a code case. 
So hopefully some answers may come out. But I will say this is one comment that I read that I did not quote, but I will quote it. If it is possible that she was a police informant, is it possible also that the police may have put her into protective custody? I don't know that that, you know, if she was in an area where she was beaten up, she was jumped and beaten up and she could have been murdered and her body could have been hidden or, or buried or concealed in some other way. Or is it possible that this guy really did set her out beside the road and she called her police informant and they picked her up? There's different scenarios here. So I started working and reading about this story and started to get ready to edit and put together my video about her. Um, I decided to leave off some stuff that I came upon toward the end. There was a lot of rumor and innuendo about this woman that um, came up once I started investigating a little bit about her story. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that, uh, uh, well, rumors for the most part. And, and it may not even be rumors. It may be very true. But until I could find something a little bit more about that, I didn't want to share all those rumors. Some other rumors that flew around were that the man that she had that she had dated a man who later went on to begin dating her daughter. Others in, insinuated and even suggested and some people even accused one of her daughters of being involved in setting her up. And a lot of people were saying that she was set up and that she was lured out there to this place. So this is the story of Myra Gertrude Ramey. Date missing September the 6th, 2020 from Buchanan County, Virginia. She is a white female, age 47, 5 foot 8, 125 pounds. She was uh, described as wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt, a gray or blue t-shirt, gray leggings, and pink bright sneakers, carrying a coach purse. Distinguishing characteristics are that she is Caucasian female with blonde hair, brown eyes. She has a faded laser-treated tattoo on her left ankle and a scar on her left knee. Her eyes are, her ears are pierced. Her natural hair color is brown. Details of her disappearance is that she was last seen in the Indian Creek area of Buchanan County, Virginia, near Davenport in the early morning hours of September the 6th, 2020. And then it just goes on to say, if you have any information, contact the Buchanan County Sheriff, 276-935-2313, or Virginia State Police. So basically, to wrap up this story, I'll just say this. She was last seen by her mother getting on the back of the motorcycle to leave that night. The last person known to have seen her or be with her was her boyfriend. Whatever the reason was that he claims they came back home that night and switched out the motorcycle for the truck. I don't know what time of night that was or what led them to go back out again later that night. If you think about it, you might ask yourself, was it that he came back with the motorcycle and took the truck because he needed a way to dispose of her body? That's, that's a theory, and it makes sense. What was his reason for doing away with her? He was the last person known and admitted to having been with her admitted to having set her out beside of the road due to an argument or whatever it was, regardless of whether she was on drugs, whether she was a police informant, whether she had problems with other people because they believed her to be 
a police informant. This woman is missing, and there really hasn't been much else said about her. It's it's a lot of rumor, just like the story that I did recently on Jimmy Kelly in Pike County, Kentucky, who went missing. I could find very few details surrounding the events of the day before he went missing and the last person known to have been with him or spoke to him. It was rumor. And it all centered around a lot of um, possibility of drug use, just like this case. So I don't know. I just wanted to wrap that up and say as of today, she is still a missing person. As far as I know, the case has not been closed. And um, thanks for watching.